Good morning. We gonna do it today? Start shelling some corn maybe? I think we are. I think we're gonna try it. We, might, we may not do a lot, but I think we're gonna fire stuff up and try it. So, Dad's back here planting some boards. I thought I'd check in with him, see what he thinks here. But, um, yeah, it's too wet to run beans today. Too cloudy and just damp from the rain yesterday and stuff. But we could shell corn. Problem is the corn itself is wet, so we'll see. Let's do it. Let's do this. So dad's gonna plane boards for a little while and stuff. He'd be around to help us, but we just, we want to get our dryer fired up. We want to get the, the corn through it and primed the, the startup procedures of our dryer or the first day. It just takes a little while. Um, and so yeah, we're going to knock some corn out today. I think we got to get the combine out. We've got to switch a few things over to get it ready for corn. We've got to get the corn head hooked up. We'll try out our new stock stomper for the first time here. And, uh, what the heck? Let's do it. The corn head out in the driveway here. Get our combine ready to go. Phil's fueling up the generator over there. We've got that ready. Uh, we'll check the oil on here. There shouldn't be a whole lot of things we need to change. Uh, no, not the tailings. We've got to change this deflector handle, pull the chopper knives out, and switch the speed to low speed. Switch the uh, rotor speed to low speed. I think that's it. All right, we got to try and get our head hooked up here. Well, not try. We have to do it, and um, I'm capable. Those um, stalk stompers make this a little bit more challenging because I can't be down too low with the feeder house when we pull up to it or we'll hit them. It makes it a little bit tighter getting it on, but we'll get it. Got all our stock stompers put on. We got the head hooked up. I put the snouts down. So we're pretty well ready to go. We should take it out in the driveway and run it and uh, get the combine speeds and everything adjusted properly. We are getting our uh, con uh, combine settings all right. It's adjusting the threshing clearance, the concave clearance there, threshing speed. 430 seems pretty fast to me. I just went to the wet presets that are in here. Um, We'll have to tweak those once we get in the field, but uh, I think we're good to go. We're going to start to head up and run it. Let's slow it down a little bit. Okay, everything spins. Everything's going the right direction. All looks good. All the way across. A little speed. The doors are closed on the bottom of the auger trough. Never left those open before. No, no. Never done that. So, all right. I think we are ready to go. We'll talk to Phil, see what he thinks. I probably should just go. Could just go. Yeah, we're just gonna jump right across the road here. I'm gonna go down to the end, and we'll combine back this way here. But um, I don't. Know. We'll see. I I think it's gonna be a little wet. But from from I don't know, not quite the end of the woods there, but somewhere in there that way, uh, it didn't get sprayed with a fungicide, so that may be a little drier over there. It's also the higher risk of stuff going down, so kind of want to start over there. Okay, here we go. Y'all ready? There it is. First corn of 22 heading in the combine. All right, let me make sure everything's running good and we'll get back to you guys. Look at that beautiful corn. This is our candy corn variety. This is that, that super high grain quality, really good stuff. So it says it's like 23, 24. I don't know if I believe that, but I would that would be awesome if we're in that ballpark. So I'm gonna make a pass here on the ends check some stuff my deck plate reading isn't working so I think we got to calibrate those I think uh, we'll just check and make sure we're doing a good job here but it's got to get a little room to work I stopped to get out and look and um, boy, I, I don't see a lot I I'm actually really happy with the job we're doing there's a kernel there's a little bit but you're gonna have a little bit you're never gonna get it all looks looks pretty good to me okay back in the combine we've got a 
We're gonna get our grain cart pulled across the road here. I think Dad's gonna help. He might jump in the combine because he isn't gonna run the grain cart. Our stock stompers seem to be doing a pretty good job. I was trying to watch, see if they're adjusted where we want them. I think they are. I think they are. Maybe a little bit too low even, but they're not. They're not bad. They're flexing like they're supposed to. So um, we like that. Our grain tank is almost full, 82%. Are we in the windows? No, we're not in the window yet. But uh, I don't know, looks looks okay so far. It says it's about 25, 26 average, which is, yeah, I expect that. I, like I said, I expect it to be drier where we did not spray the fungicide and I'd like to get into that stuff. All right, we have passed combine and duties off to dad. Uh, we got the front ends opened up here and we've got some on the cart. We're gonna just load trucks right in our driveway. So we're just gonna pull across there. So Phil's gonna turn that one around and we'll go over there and uh, get unloaded with what we got. And then we gotta go in the back and do the end rows along the woods and the trees back there. Uh, this corn's not dry. I, we're well aware uh, that this corn is not dry. The combine says it's averaging about 26. That's wetter than I would like it to be, but it is what it is kind of thing. And um, uh, we'll see. I want to get on that side of the field where we didn't spray the fungicide, and we'll see if it's drier over there. I think I think it I think it will be quite a bit drier over there. <sighs> Eventually, the U harvest system will boot up. Eventually. Come on, there it comes, there it comes. All right, uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to break out the window washing supplies that I bought. They're a little dirty, but we're gonna get this one unloaded, so. All right, let's make sure we've got this set up right. We need a new job. We need Masters 10-2, crop is corn start. Okay. We got 30,000 pounds on Cascadia reset because the truck is empty. All right, we're ready to unload. Start up our PTO, a little throttle, open the gate, and away we go. All right, we got uh, some endros opened up. Dad just called me on the radio, said he lost a nut on a U-bolt on our stock stompers. Clearly, we didn't get one tight, at least one. So I gotta go see which one it is, if we got anything in the toolbox or not, and uh, then we'll probably have to run up and get something. I'm trying to remember if those were standard. I think they're standard. And all the stuff in the toolbox is gonna be metric because, because metric. Anyway. We'll go check it out. Not a big deal. We'll get it fixed. This is precisely why you start close to home. Hey, stuff breaks. You got the parts and the tools to fix it. Close. All right. Well, we got him off and running. The U-bolt right there lost a nut, and it was the whole bar was kind of flopping around where it wasn't supposed to. So I don't know. I don't know if we just missed the one. It didn't get it tight enough. But that was an easy, simple fix. So. All right, well, let's see how this goes here. Oh, it's fun. Oh yeah, corn harvest 22. Let's go. All right, I got a minute. Let's wash a window. Oof, I didn't do great, but it's better than it was. We get some streaks, but at least you can see out of it. All for you guys, just trying to make better video quality. Something like that. Ha! Ah, all right, so we, the plan here is to fill the dryer, which should take about two truckloads, and then fill both trucks. And then get the dryer running and get stuff moving a little bit before we, um, before we do much more than that. So we'll see how much that means, but I don't think we're gonna work here for all, all, do a lot. And then once we get, get the dryer running and stuff work through it we'll come do some more later but uh yeah if we can do 20 acres this morning that'd be awesome right i mean 15 we want four truckloads off of 15 acres yeah something like that zoom out there we go there we go Look at that combine work. Oh, what a thing of beauty. What a thing of beauty. Oh, it's so nice. So we should have roughly half a truckload, eh, probably a little under half a truckload 
I'm taking two rounds here, short, short rounds. So we're gonna try and empty every two rounds, I guess is my plan with the cart. If the truck was sitting right there, we'd empty every time, but it's not. It's clear up there in the driveway, so it's a long enough haul. I wanna, I wanna try and fill a truck in two trips. Yes, I could fill the grain cart up and do it in one trip. You're right, we could. Here's the thing. My grain cart loaded is heavy, and there's no reason for that. There's no reason to haul corn around that you don't need to haul around, so we don't do that. We empty it when we need to empty it. Grain cart is one of those hurry up and wait jobs. Um, there's a lot of waiting sometimes, but then there's a lot of go, go, go as fast as you can at other times, especially in corn when it's a high volume crop. So we're in one of those waiting periods here for the moment. Uh, I took a second to look up the uh, grain uh, receiving spreadsheet that we fill out. So every, every truckload of grain that goes into our grain bins, corn, beans, or wheat, um, we pull two moisture samples from, one from the front hopper of the truck, one from the rear hopper of the truck and um, record that into a Google Sheets document that then I can pull up from the field. Phil can see it whenever, wherever he's at or whatever and uh, kind of have a good record of um, what the moisture was when we brought it in, what the test weight was, where it's going, what bin we're putting it into, what we're you know doing with it, the settings on the dryer, that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I can pull that spreadsheet up. So I looked at that first load. Uh, Phil got a 25.4 and a 26 five or something like that so we're averaging right at 26 on that first load we'll see what the second one is generally your end rows are a little bit wetter than the middle part of the field uh, although right where we're at this field has a there's, a there's a big hill up there and it really drops down into some low ground here and you can see how green that, that corn is over there so this is probably probably sort of green um, it's okay it's okay I know I'm, somebody's going to comment like, why would you shell that at 26% and not just wait for it to dry? And that's a very valid, fair question. We can wait for it to dry, uh, and it will do that. There are several issues and factors that uh, push us to want to harvest it now and do it wet. Um, so number one, we have time. We have time now to do it. We can't be running beans. There's nothing else that we can be doing harvest-wise. Uh, so it is a good time to shell some corn. Yes, it is wet. But do you remember last year when we shelled some corn early that wasn't really that wet? It was fairly dry or drier where we would normally want it. Um, and we kind of, we did some and then we, we just sort of took our time doing it because it was September. Remember how wet it turned last fall and how much we struggled to finish harvest and it was middle of December before we got done? I don't want to do that again. And so while we have halfway decent weather and ground conditions and everything else, we're gonna go. We're gonna take advantage of it and we're gonna shell this corn, even if it is a little bit wet. We've got a dryer, we can dry it. It'll be fine. Um, so the timing issue and, and harvest timeliness is a factor. Um, another uh, factor is the standability of this variety. I have talked all year on how this variety has excellent grain quality. It's super awesome grain quality. I think it's gonna yield really well. Uh, we'll get into that later. It has terrible stalks. Terrible. That's why we sprayed it with a fungicide, not once, but twice. And uh, <coughs> it's the early corn on 103 day. The plan has been to harvest this one first and early all year, ever since I planted it. Um, and it is standing just fine right now. We don't have any issues right now. But if we get into beans at the end of the week, we might be in beans for three weeks. We might not get back here. And so who knows what could happen to our stocks in the next three weeks to a month. I, I, it's There's a risk there. I don't know how big of a risk it is. It might only be a slight risk, but this is a known uh, hybrid that has issues with the stocks of it. I'm not going to take that chance. We're going to get it out. Um, so that's, that's a factor as well. And then there's the harvest loss argument. The drier the corn gets, the more losses you're gonna have at harvest. Shatter lost at the head. Um, just process losses, basically. Uh, and then there's also another argument to phantom yield loss. There's a theory out there that, that eat corn yields more when it's 24% than it does when it's 17%. It just, it, it, for whatever reason, you lose actual bushels letting that corn dry in the field. I can't prove or disprove that. I have no idea if that's true or not, but 
it's a good argument for going early. Got another one of those little brakes. Let's get some sweet combine footage, shall we? Sweet green car footage. The fungicides worked out here. Very little tar spot in this, but when we get over to the other end of the field, you're gonna see there's a whole lot more. That's good. Drive a pro. Our stock stompers working nice, protecting our tires, especially that one. Get back, get back. Oh, oh, oh. We're gonna we're gonna take like the next four videos thumbnails. I don't know because we'll be in beans. We'll have to save some of these. Get some thumbnail pictures around. I mean, I mean website photos. I have, a, I have a photo gallery on my Border View Farms website. It's pretty pathetic looking right now. There's just not much there. The good pictures, there's just not very many. I need some good pictures. Okay, Dan's been running the combine for a while here now. Sun's going to come out. Oh, it's going to be nice. Um, we got, I don't know, maybe 15 acres done. Not quite, something like that. I wanted to get out and just check, just check the ground, see what kind of loss we're seeing, what kind of job the combine's doing. So, We'll check this last pass he did, and then after he goes by, we'll check again. So um, this would be center of the combine. We'll look right here. We're looking for kernels laying on the ground. Whatever we see here, and I don't see any, any. Look at oh, there's one. We got a ground up piece there. One kernel. This is outstanding. Outstanding. Let him go by and we'll check again. Red pattern is decent, or maybe he's going a little far. No big deal. So sometimes the kernels will get go heavier, so they'll fly a little farther. So looking in the standing corn over here is always a good idea. Um, you know, there we got a, a ground up one. We should look at our grain sample. Maybe we're grinding it up a little bit, but I don't see much. So that doesn't concern me. Our cobs are, you know, they're broken lengthwise, but they're relatively whole around and they're clean. There's no kernels still stuck to those. Sometimes it's hard to look in the tire tracks because you just can't see stuff as well. I'm seeing some fines or some ground up stuff that we're probably blowing through. There's a, a little kernel, but I, I would, I am, I am quite happy with this, really. I mean, I think it's two kernels per square foot is one bushel loss per acre, and and we aren't seeing that. You know, this whole big area here, we've got one kernel right there, and a partial. But that's well more than a square foot. There's another one. So I'm going to adjust the combine a little bit to try and reduce the grinding and the fines. But we're not losing it. We're not losing it at all. So that's good. The other thing, looking at um, the job that our stalk stompers are doing, and you can see we're actually breaking some of these stalks off right at the root crown. All of them, like this one here, is not broken off, but it, it bends over one way really easily. A lot of them are breaking. That's gonna help these stalks break down and uh, our discs do a better job when we come in here and do some tillage. So, super happy with the way that, that everything is working. The grinding the corn is one of the challenges of harvesting wet grain, wet corn, right? So, a wet kernel, 25, 26%, 30%, is a lot softer than a dry kernel and so it grinds easier um, and you can break them apart so you got to be a little more gentle on it yeah so uh, but it's keeping our losses way down we don't have any header shutter shatter loss which is excellent okay so we're gonna do a little screen record on my phone here and I can actually come in in the my John Deere app and um, change the settings automatically so you can see right in the middle here you can see what the um, settings are and we can hit this adjust button and we can adjust them. I wish it would preload that. 
but we want to change the concave to 30. It was at 28. And I want to slow the rotor speed down to 320. So let's hit send changes. That should send it to the combine and ask dad to approve it, which he needs to do. And he just did. Adjustment failed. Why did it fail? All right, well, I might have to just call him on the radio and tell him to adjust it manually. Well, apparently it went through. Even though it said it failed, uh, I called Dad and told him to adjust it and what I was seeing, and he said, well, you just did that. And I'm like, well, I know, but it said it failed on my end. And he said, well, it's what those settings are, the 30 and 320. So we'll see if that makes any difference. Phil's getting the dryer ready. He should have it all loaded up at this point and uh, there's a, a mat in there you got to pull out that protects the grain from getting in the burner as it's loading and stuff bouncing around a lot um, and um, then we should be ready to fire it up here pretty quick so we're gonna we're just gonna fill this one truck and then we're gonna have to quit harvest till we till we can get some dry last round here for a while Last round, we'll have the trucks full. We'll have to get the dryer going here. Quit when I get up? Yes. All right, well, we've got the dryer full and the trucks full. We're gonna have to get this fired up and running, so I'll show you how it works later. But right now, I gotta get it running. It's running. It's running. You guys wanna see a big fire? I'll show you a big fire. No, oh, maybe not. It's not real big right now, and you can't see in there very good anyway. But there, yeah, there you go. Just can't see, the window's all cloudy. So you can see there's corn inside these little triangles here. And uh, essentially, inside here there's an open chamber and there's more triangles that are open to the inside. The air goes through those and then it has, to, they're like, like right here is one that's open to the inside. And so then it goes down through the corn and it blows out through the ones that vented to the outside. And the corn just kinda works its way down almost like a plinko board right um down down to the to the bottom and then through the metering rolls and out to the drag conveyor on the other side and into the then dry leg the big fans underneath blow the air up through the center there so we'll um i'll, I'll explain that in more detail in another video where it's not already going to be super long but uh, it, it works really well. It's just going to take us a little while to get it started because obviously all the grain in there is wet now. It hasn't worked its way from the top to the bottom to dry gradually. So what's coming out the bottom is wet. And so we got to kind of recirculate it back through and we don't have our wet bin set up yet. It just, it just takes a little bit of time. All right, Phil's going to keep that dryer moving. I have got a couple of errands to run. I got some stuff I need to drop off at one of my seat customers' places. So uh, I'm going to run up and do that. And uh, then when we get back this afternoon, we'll see where we're at. Uh, it's about lunchtime anyway, so I'll grab some lunch while I'm out. And uh, we'll keep shelling this afternoon. We're about three rounds away from getting into the stuff that didn't get sprayed with the fungicide. And I really want to see, one, what the yield difference is, uh, but two, how much of a moisture difference is there going to be as well. So we're probably going to finish this field. The question is whether we get it done tonight and we can get the dryer moving enough to do it. There's 55 acres there, so uh, that'd be that'd be a great first day of shelling corn to get 55 acres done. So uh, yeah, and then hopefully, hopefully in a couple of days we can get back into running beans. This is the last field up here we need to plant to wheat. <sighs> They're a little green yet. I'm hoping the first of the week we can run those though. I'm back, and I can smell the cooking corn. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So let's go see if we got dry corn coming out of it yet. There's still a truck full of wet corn in the driveway, so we're not close to being able to go back shelling just yet, but it's moving. It takes a long time to dry 26% corn down, so it's, it's not, we're not gonna get a lot of throughput here. 22, it's not dry. Yeah, you can see in there a little better from this side. Big fire, come on, focus behind there. Anyway, it's um, it's still cooking corn. It's not dry coming out yet. But this here definitely feels drier. So the way that this works, right, the corn comes in the top. Let me just come back here where we can see a little better. The corn's going in the top, and then it just kind of works its way down. 
so it it's drying gradually and then by the time it comes out the bottom it should be dry the problem is the corn has started in the bottom started in the bottom and didn't work its way down and uh, we're only putting out about 400 bushels an hour right now trying to get it to dry it and uh, the dryer holds like 2200 I think so it's it takes a while to get from the top to the bottom all right, well, it's, this is just going to take a little while. Um, Phil wants to get something to eat, so I'm kind of watching stuff now. Basically, we're spoon-feeding the dryer as it's calling for grain because when this setup is, when we're up and running and everything is primed and ready to go, this bin here will be our wet bin. It'll have our wet corn in it, right? And so then when the dryer says, hey, I'm getting low, there's a sensor up there, not that one, but up there at the top, that once it says, I need more corn, the panel will automatically turn this auger on and it will fill the dryer out of that bin this bin is still empty so before we can put wet corn in here we have to put dry corn in here and we have to put enough dry corn in here that it fills it up to say here or so and then suck it out so that it forms the cone because you don't want wet corn that'll sit in here in, in the bottom until until who knows when we want dry corn in there and then we'll put wet corn on top of it and it'll flow down the funnel um, so what we have to do until we can get that wet bin uh, primed with dry corn is every time that it, it says, hey, I need corn, and there's a little light here that says wet grain loading, anytime that light comes on, we have to fill it. So we'll just open up the gate on our truck, and we run some corn up there until the light goes off and it fills it up, and so we're good. We're good. But uh, this process takes a while, especially when it's slow drying because it's 26% corn coming in. So... You can watch the computer in here uh, and kind of see how it's it's drying, um, and we're we're getting closer, right? So we we're starting out with 26% corn, and uh, we kind of let it run for a while with the the door closed on the moisture sensor, so we didn't get any crap and stuff from the bottom of the dryer in there. Once we opened it, it jumped up to 23.4, and now it's kind of worked its way down here to we're at 21.7 or now it says 21.1 there. Um, so once this gets down to say 18, we'll turn the speed up a little bit more. Once it gets down to 15 or 15 and a half, we'll start putting it into the wet bin so we can start building that dry dry cone up. And uh, we, just, we just gotta keep spoon feeding it until then. Moisture starting to come down, 18, or it was down to 17, eight there a minute ago. Uh, I did a calibration on that, made sure it was right, it is. We look at our chart you can just see that line tailing off it's going to get there quicker now so we're there it's down to 17.7 we're to the point where it's about time to start cranking the speed up here and uh, letting it go i'm bored so i'm looking at stuff you know you guys leave me great comments on videos like yesterday's where it's more of an educational thing than a what i'm doing kind of thing but nobody watches them you guys gotta keep watching these videos it was a good one if you didn't go watch it i i mean it was a lot of uh, information in it about crop fertility stuff but it was a good video but look YouTube gives me some analytics 10 out of 10 it's got 2.9 thousand views it it it, it ranks 10th typically I get 3.9 to 5.2 at this point seven hours seven and a half hours in some of them I had 7,000 so nobody watched it guys all right, we've got dry corn coming out. We're actually over drying it now, which is going to happen because, yeah, it's fine. It'll it'll adjust and it'll correct eventually. Uh, but we've got our speed turned up. We started at 200. We're up to 725, which still may be a little bit slow, but we just don't know. So um, this thing will learn itself and it will control the speed automatically. It just takes it a little bit of time to uh, learn how that corn is drying and the patterns and stuff. So we're we're not there yet, but we have switched it from drying into the overhead where we're gonna recycle it back through the dryer because it wasn't dry corn coming out to now it's dry. We're putting it into our wet bin. We're starting to build that cone. So we need probably two or 3,000 bushels, two, nah, not even that, 2,000 bushels at the most in there. Uh, just need it to get up above the door and then we'll suck that out, um, the, the dry corn out of there, we'll, we'll haul it out. Uh, but then we can put wet, bin, wet corn in there. So we're getting there. And uh, we're on the second truck. Maybe maybe in a half hour or so we'll be able to get back to shelling. Okay, we are down to half a truckload or so of wet corn. So we need to go shell. We don't want to run out right now. We want to keep this dryer moving. Um, 
Oh, it smells so good. Oh. So I'm gonna go find Dad. I don't. He might be in the field working with the backhoe. I don't know. But we gotta we gotta keep shelling. You guys, ready for round two? Let's do it. Dad's back. He's in jumping in the combine. We're in the cart. I don't know how much more we can do, but we're gonna we're gonna fill some stuff up. We've got a rider. Hi, bud. Hi. How are you? Good. Good. You gonna ride for a while? Okay. Okay. I won't be late. Hey, ask me what you asked me again. Why is Grandpa driving? But you're gonna ride with me, right? Right. Right. Grandpa's in the combine. You don't have any snacks, dude. I do not have any snacks. Why? Because I don't have any. I'm sorry. Honey, pack any. Well, we'll have to get some. We're just getting started with harvest. I haven't stocked the tractors up with snacks just yet. Why? Because. Brother Ryland was naughty in school today, so he does not get to ride in the tractor or the combine. But Brayson was good. <laughs> hey, how much more do you got before you get into those back end rows? Brayson, I got another round yet. Yeah. Okay. Brayson wants to go ride with Grandpa, and I told him when he did the end rows in the back, so we got a whole nother round. Okay, then. It's going to be a minute. One round, one more. One more after this one, and then you can. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> Let's come, you don't want to ride with me. <laughs> You're not my grandpa! I'm your dad! That's better than a grandpa! No, grandpa's better! Oh! <laughs> hey, good hitting me. Yes, he's older! Because he's older? Well, of course he's older. Hey. You know, someday you're gonna have kids. Hey, someday you're gonna have kids, and they're gonna like me better than you. <laughs> yes, they will. Uh huh. Uh huh. I think so. Hold wow, on, bud. We gotta go. Hair. <laughs> My you're a little punk. We have made it to the edge of the trees there. The long, the rows get longer going in the back there, and Dad's got some end rows to open up. So we gotta get clear back in there so that he can. Uh, have somewhere to dump because there's no way he's gonna make it back out of here. I don't think. I guess we'll wait. Ah, his lights are on already. Where is he? clear in the back over there. You see him? Uh, meanwhile, we've got two trucks full, so basically what we can do here is fill the grain cart. So we're gonna work for a whole lot longer tonight. I lost my rider and the dang kid. Look at him. Eating my snacks already. Eating my snacks. Well, our cart is um, full-ish. What do we got on there? 47,000 pounds. We aren't going to make another round, I know that. So I guess we're going to probably quit here for the night. Uh, we'll keep the dryer moving. We should get enough dry corn in our wet bin to be able to use it as a wet bin, which will make things go faster. And then we can fire it up in the morning and keep it going and, and uh, shell corn for a little while at least and we'll see if we can run beans tomorrow we'll run beans tomorrow afternoon but we're gonna finish this field at least so all right good deal let's go see where the dryer's at there's rylan he's doing a little cleaning up for us good job bud look at that we're in auto mode and so it's just going to do what it's got to do to keep it at around 15% coming out. We're pushing a thousand bushel an hour at 10 points removal. That's really good. Dryer's killing it. Oh, this is going to be fun this fall. Our own little cleanup crew. We'll see how long it lasts, but, you know, he's decided he has to get it all out of the driveway. All right, we have just about got our wet bin full enough that we can... Um, uh, go ahead and quit drying and I think the plan is to quit drying for tonight get the wet bin the dry cone made in it so suck all the corn out that we can until it stops running out put that up into the overhead we'll haul that out to the town and, and start filling our contracts here when we get time and then we're just going to unload the last two trucks and put them in the wet bin and we'll fire the dryer back up uh, tomorrow morning oh. all right we're going home Phil's going to stay here and mess with the dryer and stuff for a little bit we're going to get it fired up in the morning 
and uh, keep shelling some corn. We're gonna finish at least this field that we're in. I think we did about 30 acres today. The, the I wasn't in the combine, so I didn't see the totals, and uh, my John Deere hasn't updated fully yet. Um, but it, it's it's really good corn. We're we're 200 plus. Why can't you do and, that tomorrow? Well, well, they're not all ready yet. Um, so we're gonna finish that field, and then we may try some beans tomorrow afternoon if we have some ready. Uh, we'll see. Brock's gonna be around. Um, Dad can help when needed, and I've got to unload some wheat. Uh, we've got the rest of my wheat coming tomorrow. So what are you doing, you weirdo? Oh my goodness. Look at, look at that horse. Do you like it? Yep. Anyway, thanks for watching today. Hit that like and subscribe button if you have any questions and comments. Leave them down below, and we will see you again tomorrow. Corn harvest 22 underway. Corn harvest 22. It's a good deal.